Hey guys, it's May May, and we are back with our mini album, which is not so mini. It's pretty big, actually. And I am sorry this video is a day late. I had some issues yesterday, and I think I told you guys before that I struggle with anxiety and things like that, and yesterday was kind of an anxiety day, and I just had to take a day off, so I apologize, but we are back at it. Okay, these little things that I'm going to use today are these little frames that remind me of the stamp set we've been using the whole time, these little Polaroid frames. And they came in a set of 10, and you can see there's some darker ones in this package. They were lighter ones and darker ones, and I used the lighter ones. And I got these at Christmas time because they say Christmas on them, but they're not Christmas at all. And I got them for like 90% off at Michael's. So grab that kind of stuff when you see it because this is when it comes in handy. Now, I want to show you what I did. Now, I kind of got a little ahead because... Yes, late, late last night, I decided to come into the craft room and kind of see, get an idea for the cover. And if you remember, I had chosen in the book, let me show you. I had chosen in the book this as my design um, idea for the cover. And see, it has three, it has the three repeating pieces and then the ribbon and things like that. This is kind of what we're using for our inspiration for the cover. And so I wanted to find three things that I could fit on the cover and still makes sense in the book. And I thought since we use so many of these little, um, of my stamps, the Polaroid frame stamps, I thought I would utilize these guys. So I'm going to show you what I did to create these. I think these are super cute. See that one? And then there's this one. And I just showcased the paper inside of them, and then I stamped also. But let me show you what I did. All right, I took this little guy, and he's the last one I have left. I also took a piece of scrap paper. I'm just going to grab some real quick. So I took him, and I just found some ink that I thought went with the um, project pretty well. And this one that I have from Memento, which is called Peanut Brittle, is pretty good. But you might not want to put it on too heavy. I went pretty heavy with it. But you can do it whatever color you want, and I just inked it. Now, I inked it, and I was going to just stop at that and just let it be colored. But as I was messing with it, the ink kept coming off on my finger, so it wasn't sinking in good. And I got to looking, and this wood kind of has a... Um, like a finish on it so it wasn't sinking in so I did that first just like this then I decided I was gonna take a rag and kind of get some of that ink off and that didn't help so I ended up clear embossing it and I just used some of this um, clear embossing powder from Zing and I got this at Hobby Lobby for probably not $4.99 I usually buy it with a coupon or something but I just sprinkled this on the top um, I actually Versamarked it to be safe. I went ahead and did some Versamark, sprinkled this on the top, and heat embossed it. And that's what gave my little frames this kind of shiny exterior, which I don't know if it's going to show. A little bit there, a little bit shiny. And it also sealed that color in so it wasn't coming off on my fingers anymore because that was not good. All right, so once I had it colored and embossed, I just took a piece of the scrap paper, some of that we had left over. I picked the one I wanted to be the background and I glued this guy on and trimmed him out. So that was the biggest part of making those little frames. Now the next thing I decided to do was when I was putting this together the first thing I did I was gonna just use a white piece of paper here and then my frames and that would be fine but I just thought that is really taken away from that cover. I think the color that orange is so pretty so I found this strip of paper in my um, scraps and decided I'm going to do this and I'm going to line it with the white so that it'll pop so you can see that white edge so that'll go down and then these guys are going to go on just like this I think this is so cute so there's using the threes that we found from that layout and don't forget we still got a bow and things to put over here and I'll show you what's going there too so these three guys are going on the front and while I was looking through my wood my wood items for those little frames I found these little butterflies that were sent to be to me by a viewer and what I decided to do was ink them the same way, except I used a very dry ink pad and just barely got some blue on there. And then they're just going to go, because I, I don't know if you saw in the picture, the inspiration picture I'm using, there was a little pillow on the couches. And I thought this would be cute to kind of do the little extra pop of something on each one of those. And I think a butterfly, the frilly butterfly, really goes with this paper. So I've caught you up to where I am, and now we're going to assemble this. We're going to go ahead and put all this stuff on. And now then, because this paper is not really too wide, I'm going to go ahead and use my wet glue. When you're using this glue on the bigger pieces of paper, it can dry too quick for you. But when the pages are about this size, you can usually get it on there and lay it down before it can dry. I know that sounds crazy, but this glue dries quick. Very quick. If you have this glue, you can attest to that, I'm sure. And I'm centering this piece between our flap and the colored paper. That's what I'm using for my guide for how to center this, where to put this piece. 
it's going to just be centered right here. I'm not really, I didn't worry about the inside of this since it won't really show. That's just going to stay in there. I'm only centering it in the center here. Centering it in the center. That's important. <laughs> now I'm going to put this guy down. Just like I did that one. Everybody's commenting on the color of this book. I'm telling y'all, these are not colors I would normally use. I would, I would really probably not pick up a paper pad like this except for the fact that I'd seen people use it and I just thought it was so stunning and I wanted to have something made out of it. Or at least I wanted to play with something because this one is a giveaway. If you want details for how to win this one, it's in the description below. But um, I, just wanted, I just wanted to use this orange and blue paper. I just did. Alright, now I'm going to decide which one I want at the top and the bottom. I think I'll put the yellow in the middle because... Um, the darker ones will be on either end. Now, I'm going to decide where these need to go. I think they need to be about like that. And then I'll just split the difference between these two. So, something like that. I'm going to use the wet glue because it will give me just a minute or two to move it around. And I use the wet glue to put these guys together too. Just so you know that. I glued the wood down to the paper with the wet glue and then I glued all of it together with that wet glue. I didn't use any sticky strip or sticky tape on um, on these guys. I think they're so cute. When I saw these little wooden frames, the first thing I thought was this will go with my stamp set that I have and all the little sentiments. And I was able to take the um, the stamps and put them in the inside. I was trying to show you that, but I moved it. But I was able to put them and um, stamp them in the middle. So this one says, say cheese. And this one says, making memories. And this one says, smile. Get those down. So see how I'm using the book to give me that inspiration? We'll use it on the inside again, too. But for now, it's working for our cover. Because, you know, sometimes it can be very intimidating to try to come up with a new or different looking thing. And... There's nothing new out there. It's just, you know, somebody's probably done this before, but I'm just trying to find something different. And I think this is a good way to do that. So now I'm going to put this little butterfly down. Now the biggest thing I want to do is make sure it clears the edge so that tail end doesn't get broken. Now whoever gets this could put some pictures in these little spots if they wanted to. That would be totally fine if they wanted to do that because you could just cut them and glue them in. And this butterfly does not touch behind there. So they could still cut it and stick it in that little box. Just measure it and stick it in there. This is on the back of this one I practiced with a color blue that didn't work. It was a little too dark. So that one's why it's so dark on the back. Let's add this guy here. Just going to let him sink in where he goes. And look, I practiced with a red on the back of that one. So that's something else, a little tip for you. I just kind of actually practiced on the pieces that were going on so I could see what it was going to look like. And what worked was this blue. So check that out. I think that looks really cute on the front. Now, of course, we're going to add a little more. Let me show you what I found. I found this button in one of my um, button collections that I have. And in person, it matches really well. On camera, I feel like it's not. But in person, it is really, really matchy. And I like it. And I'm going to use it on the bow that we're going to tie that we have not put on yet. So get that off of there. I just think it looks kind of cool and it'll be neat on our bow. And this is the orange ribbon I had left over to do that bow with. And let's see if I can get one out of this. And I've got my hot glue gun heating up for this. I sure can. Now you could certainly use a pattern, um, a patterned ribbon. You could double ribbon. I may even put a white on top of this. To bring some white in before we before we stick it down. The other thing I'm doing, notice that I'm letting the tails go to either side, and that's perfectly fine because the way this is going to lay on our book, it won't it doesn't have to be in a specific spot. So I really like that. So get my ribbon scissors and trim that, just like that. So we've got our bow done, and let me get some white. I think it'll be pretty. Here's the white. I'm just going to tie a bow just like that first one. Just let those tails go. Now, of course, these will do right. <laughs> these will go where they're supposed to go with my look. Nope, it did. Trim that 
trim this out. And then I'll just kind of stack these on top of each other. I think that'll be cute. But we'll do that with the hot glue. Then I will definitely go back and add fray check. Or if you don't have any fray check, you can use just a glue that dries clear. It does the same thing, but it's not as quick as the fray check is. So you will want to make you make sure you do something to the edges. You can even use a lighter and kind of singe them if it's the right kind of ribbon. Um, but I would just use either clear glue or some fray check. Let's add some hot glue here to this bow. And I'm putting that bow right where those ribbons met. If you remember when we put that on, those ribbons, I just cut them to meet each other. So that's where that's going. That is so pretty on there, isn't it? I think I'm going to tack it down in behind the little loops too, just in some places to make sure, just so that over time there's no issues. So there's that one. Let me check the white and see if I want to make it any smaller. I think I do want to make it a tiny bit smaller. I'll bring these loops in. Let me trim that. Okay, and that will go there. Put some glue on the back. Stick it down. That looks good. I like it. And then this button is going to go right on top of there. I really like that, but it's a little bit lifted because of this piece. I'm going to try to snap it off with some of my wire cutters. And here's what I do. I just kind of grab the um, piece that's poking out with these wire cutters. Then put my hand over it and put it down. And squeeze. <laughs> so there we go. It came off. Do you see that? That works perfect. And I don't know where it went, but it came off. Now I'm just going to add the hot glue to the back. And I like to add a lot because I want it to stay. And this hot glue will just sink down into that ribbon. And I'm just going to let that sit there for a second. And then we'll come back and get started on another part of the project. Okay, for the next part of the project, I want to work on the tags that we're going to put into these pockets that we made. Um, these pockets back here, these pockets that we made. Well, it's not that pocket. It's this pocket. And um, anywhere we have pockets, these guys and these guys. And what I want to do is measure this one first so I know how wide it can be. So this one can be... I think if I do it at about two and a half inches, we're good. Because remember, we use foam tape in there. So like two and a half inches wide by about, I'm going to say, seven and a half inches tall for safekeeping. And I'm going to make notes of this because this is something I don't want to have to do multiple times. I just want to write down what I'm measuring. Okay. So I just have this little strip I'm going to use. So I can make some that are 2.5 by 7.5, all right? And then I'm going to look at these pockets back here, and these can be pretty big, you know, because um, these can be as big as 5 inches by almost 8 inches. So I'm going to say 7 and 3 quarters, so 5 and 7 and 3 quarters. So that'll be those. And then these guys can be about four and a quarter by about seven and a half again. I mean seven and three quarters. So that gets us three different sets of tags. Now I can go in any any sizes in this I want to. I just can't go bigger than that. And then here we don't have to do any tags. This is just for photo mats in there. And then I do want to find something to put right here. But I think I'm going to take something from the paper pad to put right there because I need it to stay flat. So let's go ahead and cut some tags out real quick. Now before I get into any new paper, I'm going to dig through all of my scrap pieces that I had and see what I have in here that I can use. This piece is perfect because it is just slightly bigger than two and a half. Okay, so I can do that. And then this one was supposed to be seven and a half. So I'm going to cut that at seven and a half, just like so. And then these pieces, I can probably get several of those tags out of it. And I know they look small, but remember, there's plenty of room in this album for bigger pictures, too. So this is just a good place for you to be able to do maybe some journaling 
or some tiny Instagram photos, or maybe you have, you know, some long pieces where you want to cut somebody out of a picture and stand them up here, not cut them out and throw them away. <laughs> But there's plenty of space in this album for big stuff. And remember, we only have like four spots for those skinny ones. So we're going to make these real quick out of some scraps. And this is just how I like to do it. I like to go to my scraps from the uh, making of the album first before I dig into fresh paper. We'll do this with the um, pattern paper as well. All right, so there's four, and that's all I have room for in there. And I'm going to utilize on this my angle punch. Now, we looked for these everywhere, and it is going, this is being discontinued, this particular punch. But when we did find it, we did put a link, and they sold out. So if you find this angle and photo punch from Crocodile, let us know. And we put it on the Facebook page, and that way people can go grab it, because so many people want it. And one of our subscribers did. She found it, and they were like, I think there were 18 of them in stock, and they were gone within a couple hours because everybody wants it, but it's really hard to find. So anyway, now I have these white tags that are ready to be have some um, paper put on top of them. And these are going to be too skinny for anything else I have, but let's go ahead and look at the strips I have that I can do some matting on those tags with. So I can, I can get some out of those scraps and this and this one. So I have a lot of these kind of scraps laying around, so going to cut these down. Now since these are two and a half by seven and a half, this will be two and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And that will be just right. Then I'm going to go ahead and angle it with my angle cutter. This is one reason I like to use this guy because it keeps everything very consistent. So then when I go to mat this, do you see how it works just perfect? So there's a tag for those skinny spots that we have, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut some more of these scraps down. I'm still not throwing these tiny scraps away. You never know when you might need them. I'm just cutting down and saving all these little pieces. Now the next thing I wanted to do was cut some of these down because I want them to become um, filler for our pockets too. I think they're really cute. And I'm just going to use them just like they are because they're double-sided. I'll probably just punch a hole and maybe stick a ribbon or something in there. But I just think these will be really cute stuck here and there throughout the book. And you can add pictures or you can use them for journaling. Whoever gets it can use it for all kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's look at what we've got so far. These are the little thin tags that I'm going to use to go in those little... Um, photo frames we did. Then I have these scrap pieces. You know, I used a lot of these different color papers like this. So I just took the scrap I had and cut them down to be tags and tagged the tops of them. And I'm going to show you my plan for those. And I thought about turning these into tags, but I think what I'm going to do is not. Because I'm sending this to somebody else and they may want something to play with in the book, I'm going to use these just like they are and just stick them into the pockets and stuff. So that way, whoever gets it, if they want to use this for a photo mat or for a journaling mat somewhere in the book, they can do that. So those will just go in the pockets. But I want to show you what I'm going to do here. I don't have a lot of the paper left to do a lot of matting on these. So I'm going to use these strips and just turn them into color on these mats. First, let me poke a hole in them so I know where the center is. So I'm just going to use my crocodile and poke a hole in these. There's one. One. And there. Okay, and then those, of course, we'll put ribbon or something in those. And I'm going to Take this strip right here and just glue it down and then trim it away. I'll show you what I'm talking about doing. All right, so I've got the glue on it. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to go to one side of that hole and put this piece down just like that. Okay, rub that into place and then trim off the end. Okay, so that does that portion of the tag, okay? And then I'm going to come back and see if I can't use this piece. I can, but I don't like that color on there, so I'm going to find another strip. I've got plenty of these strips laying around. Plenty. Okay, I like that one. So I'm going to put this one down. So this piece I'm going to stick down just like this. And then trim that away. So then this tag, with the exception of any journaling that needs to go on it, 
is good on the front and this way the recipient can just add a little piece if they want to put journaling or they can put a photo here or a photo here and so I'm going to do that to some of these tags the same way because I like I said I'm trying to use up all these cute little scraps because I don't want any left over that's a pretty big piece right there I could use it let's see what we could do with it we could run it across the bottom oh I like it on the orange now you could turn this into a pocket but I'm not going to the reason is I've got way too many pockets already and so I'm afraid if I keep adding pockets, you won't be able to get everything in this book. I'm just going to put this guy even down here on the bottom. So you can see how fast you can do a tag. You do not have to sit there and measure them and measure all the little strips and stuff you're going to put down. Just do this number and then just cut it away. And you know you've got the right size and everything. And then you're not having to measure each little tag for whatever strips you're going to add to it. I think I got that one down all the way. Well, I must have because it won't lift up. So there's that. And if you want to, you could come back in with these little strips and maybe add another strip, maybe at the top here or here. Can't really see that one. Let's see what happens if we use the back of this paper. You could. I'm just not going to. I don't think it needs it. I think when somebody puts something on it, it'll be fine. So put that here. And I think this one will be so pretty on this green. That is really pretty. I think I'm going to run it to one side like that. I think I'm going to do that. I think that would be pretty. So let me see how far I need to take my glue right here. See that cheater method? <laughs> These things can get very long and drawn out. So if you want to find little sneaky ways to get around things, do it. You're still doing the work, and it's still beautiful. You're just not having to measure and slice and come back and change everything, you know, 500 different ways. Smash that down. Now, all we need to do is take our angle cutter again, put that guy back in there, cut that right off, and then punch this hole again. No big deal. So now we have another tag. Isn't that cute and quick? And that way our tags look like they all came with the book, right? Now on these guys right here, just pick the side that you want to show and put the glue on the opposite side of it. This happens to be one of my favorite prints from the whole pad, so I wanted to make sure that I had that one sticking upward. And there's that one. And I'm just checking on which side do I want. I like this side. I like this side too. I'm going to let this one be up because I'm trying to keep the color in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and make more tags, not like these because I think this is all that will fit of this size, but like these bigger tags I did. But I'm not going to make you guys, you know, watch me do that. I showed you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make a bunch of those little tags and I will put those in the book. But I'm going to go ahead and put these in with you watching so I can give you a little walkthrough of it. And then when we get back in our next video, I'll show you what I have made and put in there. And listen, I'm not going to do anything more than what these look like. If I do anything spectacular that I think you need to see, I will definitely put that in the video. But I'm just going to make the tags. I'm going to punch through all these at one time, which is what I love about this guy. It is super duper heavy duty. Okay, let's get the book. It's looking so pretty, guys. Okay, this guy gets these skinny ones, so I'll stick that one in there. Check that out. Isn't that cool how that fits right in? That's awesome. I love it. And then these guys get the bigger ones. I was actually thinking this would be a cute place to put these like postcards um, because I just think they'd be cute in there. I want to find one that's very contra contrasting so you can see it. Isn't that cute? And then let's put one of these guys in here for a pocket. Oh, it's sticking. I should have thought about that, but there we go. There's that one. And then, no pockets there. These pockets can get, look how cute these are in there. And they'll be able to hold more than one because these little pockets hold a good bit. And then, let's put this guy in. If I can pick it up. That's all right. It's a little, it catches, you know, it, it blends a little bit, but not too terribly bad. That one looks good with the different. I like that. And then, do we have pockets? Yep, right here. We'll add another postcard. I actually like, no, I want the postcard to show. So we'll add a postcard. And maybe that. 
I'll stick this guy in this pocket. I don't think this will fit. No, it's too big, too big for that pocket. I'll find another spot for it. And then we pick these guys up. And we'll put this one. Do I not have another one? I know I do. That one got one. Oh, I only did two of them, didn't I? Sure did. But that's okay, because now we can put these in here. There's that one. We'll put it in that pocket. And put this one, which I cannot pick up to save my life, in this one. Very cute. Let's put this guy back here in the back. See, these big tags will fit back here in those in those um, slants that we had. Super duper cute so far. All right, let's go back and add these guys where we can. I'm gonna stick this one in here, and then add another one to this one. They slide in really good. Just put this guy behind there. That'll help that show a little better. And you may decide that you want to use these in a different way. And the person who gets this may decide they want to use these in some way. And that is perfectly fine. They can do that. It is theirs to play with. It is their album. So there we go. All of those are now in there. All of our little tags here and there. I like that a lot. And let's open the inside so you can see the inside. Look how much space is in here for pictures. Now, my plan for this, at first, I was going to do a lot of decorating in here, but the album is getting really, really thick. Let me show you. See how thick this is getting? And I don't want to add any more thickness here so they can add photos. So this is going to be a great place for photos. A lot of photos and a lot of journaling can happen in here. And the cool thing is, because it's inside these flaps, the album doesn't seem empty at all. So if you think, oh, you're leaving it empty, I don't believe I am because I think with all of this decoration on the outside that those pieces don't seem empty. And when they put photos and journaling in, it's going to be very full. And don't forget, we still have these tabs that slide out too that can be decorated. Now, I will go back and add some ribbon into these holes and things and um, when we get back together the only thing we really need to finish up is this little guy and um, if I am going to add any ribbons and things we'll do that together but I think we're getting close to done because I don't want to overfill it so that somebody else can put some stuff in it too. All right, guys, tell me what you think about the cover. I hope you liked it, and I love that inspiration from the book, and um, I look forward to seeing what it looks like with some more tags in it, and I will see you in our next video, which will either be on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not exactly sure because I've got myself off with my scheduling, so if you don't see it on Wednesday, it'll be on Thursday, but we'll see the next video, and we'll finish this guy up. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.